the stock market um, fell the other day. That, that um, that's not my punchline. That is actually what happened. <laughs> so well, down four percent in the US. Other, typically, in one day. yes. Typically, the stock market either rises or it falls from one day to the next. Yeah. There it doesn't a, stay the same every day. There is a chance that it does end up at exactly the same point, but I can't remember that happening. So it's either up or down. Um, and when it's down, the media makes a frenzy of it. But uh, you know, it's probably reasonable. I think the US stock market fell about 4%. The Aussie stock market fell about 2.6% in one day. And the media headline was worst fall in two years. So... My good friend Scott Phillips from The Motley Fool kind of inverted this logic a bit, which I thought was really uh, eloquent. If you think about that, like the media says, worst fall in two years. Another way to interpret that headline instead of fear is, huh, that's the worst fall in two years. Well, this is, if this is as bad as it gets, it's not so bad. So, you know, the stock market in the US got hammered because um, inflation, which is what we're all talking about at the moment was higher than was expected. So we had expectations from economists, from analysts, from research firms come out and say it was going to be X. It was X plus a little bit more. But the thing that really scared people was within the inflation number, there are different types of inflation. So we know that like energy prices are going up. We know that um, steel and timber is going up. Um, So... Those are different types of inflation. Fuel, um, everyone will know if they've been to the uh, survey recently, you'll know that your fuel bill has fallen from like $2 a litre or more, like in the country it's still about $2.50 a litre, to back towards um, more like $1.50. And so what we're seeing is we're seeing energy prices fall. So that means that inflation as a result of um, fuel prices, as a result of energy is coming down. So that inflation's coming down, which is good. But what's happened is now that inflation has slowly flowed through to other things. So like uh, things like your cup of coffee that you drink in there, Kate, that type of thing, or this wonderful juice box from Golden, Golden Circle. How much was coffee this morning? I think, well, my soy latte was, wherever it is, it's on the ground, uh, was $5.80. I paid six fifty for a coffee the other day. And I'm like, yeah. what's happening? So you did a- get a large though. Yeah, I did get a large. Extra milk. And it's from Axel. So <laughs> yes. if you go to Axel, you can just give you a bit of your kidney every time you go. But um, th- this is the thing, right? This is a good example actually. Because once a cup of coffee like that goes up, so once that goes up, what typically happens is it's harder for that to come down. Mm. Whereas say, like I just said to you, fuel has fallen from like $2 in the major cities down to like $1.50. That fell very quickly and people were like, oh, that's great. We don't complain when it falls. But a cup of coffee, right, if that goes up, it's actually harder for it to come back down because for that to come back down, typically what's happened as a result of that going up is things like milk prices, um, the cu- the price of cups, the, the rent that the shop's paying has gone up. Uh, the other thing is wages go up and it's very difficult for wages to come back down as quickly. So that's when we talk about inflation um, flowing through the system. It's that's the thing that we're worried about. That type of inflation, not the inflation that comes from um, commodities like iron ore or um, like which is steel or Mm. coal or that. Um, So that's that's basically look at that. What an education lesson! Didn't even prepare any of this. (laughs) Just kind of like explained yeah how inflation works. But um, that's what we're worried about. And so the, the, the big picture is, if you don't really care for any of this, the big picture is that it could mean that interest rates go higher in the United States, higher than we were expecting. And that's obviously bad because then we're like, you know, mortgages go up in the United States, their economy enters a recession, p- potentially, blah, 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 blah. And that's the fear anyway. And one of the things that will happen, this is my, so I am now, you cannot see this, but I am putting my crystal ball on the table and I'm saying if interest rates go higher in the United States than we think, you can expect the Australian dollar to fall. So if you're planning an overseas holiday like to the US or if you're going to Europe, you might consider transferring some of your money now. So I know you're you're going, Kate. Yeah, where was this tip? You haven't told me this yet. Um, So you might consider that, even just some of it now. Hmm. Um, Now, this is not not going to like – 
the Australian dollar is very stable as a currency, but um, that's just something to keep in mind. And that's kind of the implication of that. But if we look around the world, um, Europe is like in a really bad way uh, economically and um, because the energy prices are up like two or 300%. And places like Germany and that are going to struggle to find the energy to like power them through winter. So you might be going over there and you might just rug up. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's I'm going to have to take a few jackets with me. Yeah. But that's what's happening. Um, has it really changed the way people should be investing? No, not really. Um, just as we come into the next year, I'd just say, make sure you've got your emergency fund. Make sure you're gainfully employed. That's mm. basically it. multiple sources of income. If you can, just protect yourself. Be prepared for the worst. Expect the best is probably what I would say. Mm. And the Reserve Bank over here has indicated there'll be a few more yeah. interest rate increases this year. That said, yeah, that's probably true. That said, they also said that we wouldn't have interest rate rises until 2024, and that didn't happen. <laughs> so people bash the, the Reserve Bank in Australia for making these expectations. Sometimes they happen, sometimes they don't. Yeah, I expect that – I agree that we'll probably see that interest rates go up in Australia. But So when you get your mortgage, um, so say like your fixed rate, I think we talked about this recently. But when you get your mortgage, you know the fixed rate that you have as an option – that typically um, prices in some of the what the banks expect to happen in the future. That's why your fixed rates are a lot higher than your variable rate. Does that make sense? Because if they lock in your interest rate and interest rates go up, they have to adjust for, oh, you know, otherwise in a year from now, they won't be making any money. So they're basically saying, we expect interest rates to go up. That's why we're putting our fixed rate higher. Yeah. That's why you pay more for that. Um, but over like a 10 or 20 year period, a standard variable rate, while it is unpredictable on your budget, it tends to work out better. Tends to, not always, but tends to because of that reason. Yeah. There you go. Second lesson to it. Dave. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I know um, after the RBA rate increase last week, my lender said they were passing on the full 0.5% increase onto me for my variable rate. Did you say so thanks? I said thank you. I said thank you. Um <laughs> It was great, great news, but um, yeah, it's something to be aware of, um, mm. especially in this environment, staying on top of your home loan interest rates. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely now is a good time to speak to your broker and to just ask their opinion. Um, I wouldn't, it's a tough one. Like, I just think uh, whether to fix your rate or not is a pretty tough decision. So, like, if you've got a big mortgage, you might really value the stability, but just be prepared that next year we could have interest rates falling. So um, I guess the way I think about it is kind of regret minimization. You can lock in some now. If you don't lock it all in, then you might be able to benefit from some lower variable rates while still having some predictability and some guarantee that if rates do go higher, you've locked it in at a lower level. It's really, it's a tough one and it basically comes down to what you're prepared to risk. Um, for me, we're still variable. So um, yeah, that's that's just what works for us. But if it's someone else, like 